Hi. What I've seen on TikTok has bewildered me. What I've seen on Twitter has doubly bewildered me. Absolutely bewildered. Pretty little thing should just be renamed Pretty Little Loom at this point. I am very aware of how bad that joke was, but I'm pretty sure you will get what I mean. Oh, and also, <laughs> if you've never seen me before, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here and you like me with a face in my chan, and you want to subscribe to my chan, my Jackie Chan, then subscribe to my chan. I'm trying to hit 10k this year, so if you guys want to help me get to that goal, then subscribe just down there and join the chan. Also, before I get into this, if you guys want to follow me on my social media, I have Instagram and Twitter. They are both at Elsgarrett. More specifically though, if you want to follow me on my Instagram, I post a lot of Instagram stories with polls, questions, asking you guys what types of videos you want to see, things like that. So if you guys want to keep up to date with what's going on with this channel, what I'm posting on this channel, what I'm planning for this channel, then follow me on there. So yeah, I'm stop chatting, absolute dog's bollocks, and I'm going to get on with the video. So basically, to give you guys a quick lowdown before I start telling you about the businesses and stuff like that. There was a tweet made by a girl called Katie. This is her Twitter right here, just to give her the creds and everything. She basically made a tweet showing that she'd ordered a pair of joggers from Pretty Little Thing and lo and behold, when she received them, the label inside was not a Pretty Little Thing label, yet a Fruit of the Loom label. This is a tweet that went viral right here if you haven't seen it. I personally found all this out through TikTok, but this is kind of where this whole thing originated from. So I can hear you all asking, I can hear you through the camera, who is Pretty Little Thing? Who is Fruit of the Loom? Let me get into that. So Pretty Little Thing is a fashion retailer that is aimed at 14 to 24 year olds. The company is operated by the Boohoo Group and it operates in the UK, Ireland, Australia, the US and France. So the brand's main headquarters are actually in Manchester, but they also have offices apparently in London and Los Angeles. This is all according to Wikipedia. Now I know my main demographic on my channel is American. So any of you American viewers out there, I'm just genuinely wondering, is Pretty Little Thing a company in America that's kind of big? Like do a lot of people shop Pretty Little Thing? Because in England, it is literally like diamonds. Personally, I don't really get the hype around it. I don't really appreciate the quality of it, but it is like, everyone loves it. So is it big in America? Is it well known in America? Because I'm not American, so I have no clue. So the next company that we're gonna be talking about is Fruit of the Loom. So according to Wikipedia, again, Fruit of the Loom is an American company that manufactures clothing, more specifically underwear and sportswear. And again, I know that this company is very big in America. I think it's kind of known in England too. What I remembered when I saw this brand, it, it like uncovered a memory that I forgot I even had. My PE tops in school were made by Fruit of the Loom. I remember the label on the back of the PE top. So when I saw this on Twitter, I was like, why the heck would Pretty Little Thing be made making joggers from like a company that have like school source clothes from them and stuff like that if that makes sense I don't really know if that makes sense so I was just a little bit confused and it just gathered my interest and I was like I just wonder what's going on here so when I initially googled you know pretty little thing fruit of the loom scandal I initially found a lot of articles from places like the metro the daily mail the independent they all repeat the same exact information but they were all basically talking about it basically what happened and just kind of giving a really quick like synopsis of basically the situation at hand however what was really weird was that in every single one of these articles that I looked at. They all mentioned that Pretty Little Thing has been reached out to for a comment, but they actually haven't responded. And these articles were written, I think between like the 20 and 22nd of March. So it was a little while ago, enough time at least for Pretty Little Thing to give a comment on this about why they would put the wrong label in their clothes and basically flog something off as their own. So yeah, they've received absolutely no response. So I think it's just going to be interesting to see if they actually make a comment and kind of explain what's going on. <laughs> so the questions. What's going on here? Why is this blown up? What's so wrong with this? I'm gonna answer them right now. So personally, as I said, I don't really shop with Pretty Little Thing. I just don't really appreciate the quality of their clothes. I don't really, I don't really wear that style of clothing. But I guess if I kind of put it in perspective for myself, I kind of thought, well, if I ordered a 70 pound champion jumper from Urban Outfitters and when I got it, it had like an Asda or a Walmart label in it, I would be pretty pissed. I would also be very confused, but I would be rather pissed because it would just look like champion has just stuck their name on a supermarket hoodie. So yeah, that's basically the lowdown on what's happened. So I'm gonna pass you over to Presentation L's, right? Because Presentation L's has a presentation about this to give some info on what this is and why companies do this type of thing and why it's so common today. It's sadly very common. This is a very common thing. Very, very, very common. So yeah, well, let me pass you over.
Hi, welcome to Presentations with Presentation Elves. Welcome to today's presentation about misbranding. From your fave, Fruit of the Loom gal, let's just hop right into it, shall we? So I can hear you all begging the question, right? As per usual, what is misbranding? I just wanna say this before I give you guys a definition, misbranding definitely generally applies to food products and like the labels and what's included on food labels. However, I do personally think that this can apply to clothing as well because these joggers are misbranded. It's not the brand that this girl thought that she was buying and it's not the website that she bought them from as well. I also needed a term for this topic for this video and there isn't really a term out there. Mislabeling isn't really a term and I guess the only word that you could really apply this to is misbranding. So yeah, I just need a topic for this video. Please don't crucify me for this. Let's just get on into it. So misbranding. So to brand food item or drug, it says, falsely in a misleading way, specifically to label in the violation of statutory requirements. So I guess it's just kind of saying that, yeah, it's basically what the word says. It's the mislabeling of an item. You're not labeling something correctly. So then, I was asking. So is Fruit of the Loom a wholesale company? I kind of assumed that they were just considering the fact that I did have PE tops when I was younger from Fruit of the Loom. However, I wasn't entirely sure. I wasn't gonna jump to conclusions. I wasn't gonna make assumptions. I wasn't gonna judge a book by its cover. So I did some research and I found out that yeah, in fact, Fruit of the Loom is a wholesale company. But then I was after that, then kind of wondering about the laws of relabeling because I know it's not really legal. However, I know it happened. So I wasn't really sure about how illegal it was. I mean, if it even was illegal, I just assumed that it was illegal and it wasn't really allowed, it was kind of unethical. Relabeling, what is it? Is it all right? I found this kind of Yahoo Answers page, it was definitely American, but it did just kind of give some insight on whether things are allowed or not. And I think since Pretty Little Thing does distribute in America also, this does apply. And I will get onto the UK laws as well in a second, but I'm just gonna start with this. So this girl was basically asking a question to say, can she buy unbranded clothes from China and relabel them herself and sell them with her own label on? Now, before I tell you what the answers were, this lovely chap, Philip, right? Can we just appreciate how gorgeous Philip is, right? What a fine chap indeed. He gave us some really great information on the rules surrounding this question. Now, obviously, A, we know that Pretty Little Thing isn't sourcing clothes from China and we know that they're definitely not sourcing unbranded clothes, but I guess the kind of same thing still applies. So basically, Philip said that you can buy unbranded clothing from a manufacturer and even have them put your brand on the clothing. These types of arrangements are common. You cannot, however, put your brand on someone else's clothing without their permission. So I guess the reason this is a little bit weird, a little bit, hmm, because these people that are claiming to be attorneys, I don't know how legit this website is, is that generally, yes, you can buy the clothes that are unbranded. However, it's illegal to then just stick your own label on them. And in another answer that I found, it wasn't this one. It basically was saying that, yeah, it's definitely illegal to stick your own brand on top of someone else's brand without permission. So I guess the words that stuck out to me there were without permission. So I guess let's just assume in this instance that Pretty Little Thing did in fact have permission to do this. So I guess what they're still doing is kind of wrong because the joggers that they are sending out, whether they tried to cover them up or obviously in this case didn't, were initially branded. And as we've seen in some of the articles, they were either just sent as they are. The labels in some of these articles show that they were either cut out or covered up. According to these articles, it actually includes other businesses like Top Man. I didn't really wanna like include that in the video as well because it kind of strays away from like the main point of what we're talking about. But I will link those articles in the description so you guys can check them out for yourself. It is just really weird and it seems a little bit subtle in my opinion. But as I said, they're also cutting out these labels. I will just insert that video now quickly so you guys can see it. Look, it's the fruit. <laughs> it's the fruit. A pretty little thing I finessed everyone. So let's just take the other scenario. Let's just assume that Pretty Little Thing did not have permission to do this. They did not have permission to either sell these joggers, send them out, or relabel them. Because it's clear they've done both. It's clear that they have tried to A, relabel, but also just send them out as they are, because maybe they can't be asked. Maybe it was an error in production, but yeah. So yeah, if this was the case, this would be a copyright issue because Pretty Little Thing were trying to pass these joggers off as their own, saying that they basically created them because they are their own brand. They're not selling other people's brands through their brand. It's not like ASOS. They're selling their own clothing. This is a Pretty Little Thing jumper, not we're Pretty Little Thing and we're selling Fruit of the Loom if that makes sense. And also, as I said, this all came out in late March, so it seems a little bit weird. It's a little bit weird. They haven't come out with a statement to kind of cover up this and kind of clear up what's said. 
So now I'm going to talk about the law in the UK around this. I mean, I might be completely wrong because all my law assignments are generally quite wrong, but I did an assignment on this recently. My law teacher, if you're watching right now, hi Dan. I hope you're proud of me for doing this because, ah, oh, this makes me cringe because I'm probably wrong. However, I'm pretty damn sure this falls under the Consumer Rights Act in the UK. Uh, and I also wrote here, don't quote me lol. I am a BTEC student, so I have got the IQ of a, the IQ of a piece of paper but hey ho. But the reason that I think that this falls under this act is because the item that was bought by the girl does not fit the description and quote from this is not fit for purpose so yeah. It's not technically fit for purpose because if you think about it she bought one thing and she received another. It's not fit the description. The description she bought was pretty little thing not through the loop so yeah. I think this is illegal. What you've done is illegal. <laughs> what you've done is is illegal. Yeah now I'm panicking. And I think the Pretty Little Thing hasn't released a statement because they are in the wrong. And in addition to this, as I said, this has happened with Top Man as well. This was included in those articles. And just to kind of touch on that, this guy, I don't know what he bought. I think it was like a hoodie or something along those lines. When he bought this and realized that this was the case, I think in his case, whatever it was, I think it was Fruit of the Loom and it was a hoodie, which is covered over by a Top Man label. When he tried to leave a review on the website, the review got taken down. And also other girls did give statements for these articles. And they said that when the same thing had happened to them with the misbranding, mislabeling. They had just been told to bin their items and I think they were either given a refund or sent a replacement. But I think companies telling their customers to bin their items is probably not the best way to try and resolve something like this and kind of show that you are in fact genuine and selling your own product. So it all just seems a bit iffy to me if I'm being honest. I don't know about you guys but if I was told to just put my thing in the bin I would definitely find this company a bit sus. So yeah. So, my loves, to draw us all to a conclusion, this is very messy, it's very wild, it's very bewildering, but that's the reason why I want to share it with you because it's wild and I hadn't seen anyone make a video on this yet so I just kind of wanted to be the one to do it and kind of get the information out there, show you guys another company that's doing something very, very interesting, very, very interesting. <laughs> and I know if it was me and I bought a pair of joggers and I paid £20 for them and I received a pair of joggers and they've been inflated from the price of £8, I would be pretty pissed myself. So if you guys have any thoughts on this topic and you want to share them in the comments or you have bought something from Pretty Little Thing or any of the other brands that I've mentioned and you have noticed a different labeling, more specifically Fruit of the Loom, but if there's been any other labels that you guys have noticed in the Pretty Little Thing orders, then let me know because I would honestly be shocked if it happened to me. I'd just be a bit like, say what now? <laughs> because it didn't even look like they tried to cover it up. Obviously, I think in some of the photos you could see that they had cut the labels out and covered them over. I have no idea. But yeah, guys, I really, really do hope that you have enjoyed this video. This is, I guess, a continuation of my business series. I always say at the end of these videos, if you guys have any businesses that you want me to do videos about, look into anything that you've seen online, do let me know in the comments and I will for sure think about the video ideas. Yeah guys, I really do hope that you have enjoyed this video and yeah, I shall see you in the next one. Adios my love. Nice to see you again. Goodbye.